Jesus is holy, my lover is holy. Holy, holy, Jesus is holy. We will see your face. We will see your glory. Jesus is holy. Jesus is holy. Emma is holy. Emma is holy. Elila sukarakataba. Can you hold your voice for one minute and say, Lord, let your glory cover us tonight. Father, in one minute, lift up your voice. Ashaba la gata bada, shaba la gata ba, baba baba da, araba baba. Let your glory cover us again tonight. Lembrokos, imale, 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 shaba. Maria Bakatus, Vinga Brakata Balakala, Shabala, Harisopri Katapalas, Embri in Kadua, Ekadua, Ekadua, Holy Ghost, you are the ocean that never runs dry. Holy Ghost, you are the ocean that never runs dry. Holy Ghost, Shereba Kinibo, Abadane Mano Samana. I've seen the Lord doing mighty things. I've seen the Lord doing great things. Hi, Holy Ghost, you are the ocean that never runs dry. Shabala, Holy Ghost, you are the ocean that never runs dry. Aya, Holy. Ocean that never runs dry. I have seen, I have seen, I have seen, I have seen. Holy Ghost, you are the ocean that never runs dry. And call me, call me, call me. Holy Spirit, call me, draw me now. Shabalada. Call me, call me, call me. Holy Spirit, call me, draw me now. I am here as your vessel. Take me for your use. I am here as your vessel. Alabala. Take me for your use. I am here as your vessel. Kabala. Take me for your use. Would you call me? Holy Ghost. Would you call me? I want to come. 
Call me, call me, call me, I want to come. Speak to me, speak to me, speak to me, Elias Bele. Call me, call me, call me, I want to come. sit down um, we we'll give God praise and glory for his help so far we are grateful to God sincerely we are grateful for his goodness and his mercies upon us we have come to the third day or the third evening in Fasting Festival 2024. And I believe that the purposes of God over our lives are being bettered. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Right. Um, I wouldn't want to waste plenty of time um, doing introduction. Uh, I may do others tomorrow. Um, because of want of time, I would just want to acknowledge the presence of uh, God's servant, uh, Apostle Dan, one of us, the set man of Zoe Gospel Mandate. God bless you. Hallelujah. I also want to acknowledge the presence of um, Pastor Miracle, the pastor in charge, Mahanem International Gospel Center, Oka. God bless you. Uh, I will also acknowledge the presence of my my elder brother. We've been friends for many years and he's been a blessing to us in this house several times. Actually in 2009 when Fasting Festival began at Tungo, he was there. And um, he also came in here today I'm talking of no other person than God's servant, Reverend Engineer Azubike Okeken. God bless you, sir, for coming. And uh, for the first time, he came with his beautiful wife. God bless you, man. Just say praise the Lord. I want to hear your voice. I don't know. This is our first time of coming to Man uh, First time coming to Fast and Festival. <laughs> God bless you, man. You're welcome. We're happy to have you. God bless you so much. Um, I'll leave out that introduction for tomorrow because of time. Um, God's servant is here. Um, the man God has appointed to bless our lives one thing is sure he doesn't travel alone hello are you with me the only thing you do is just to put your heart in order so that even if you he, he, he doesn't come around where you are let those who came with him come around you the man is not alone Praise the Lord. 
whether whether you listen or not, something will come upon you. Just, just be sure that you are here. You're already implicated. Help me make welcome my friend and brother, Apostle Edu Udechukwu. God bless you. Keep clapping, keep clapping, keep clapping. Lift your voice and shout. Amen. Please, you can be seated. I think I feel at home in this house. Am I, am I correct to say that? We'll try to do some teaching this evening. Then tomorrow we we do demonstration but if the holy ghost moves ahead of me i cannot tell him no because i'm a servant amen it's good to be here and i celebrate and honor everybody that is here it seems as if they there are some people that is here that like me a lot so i love you back amen there is an older lady that sings in the choir where is she Okay, you are the one. You are the one. God bless you. I've marked your face and all that. And then this, your man behind you. Uh, yes. A few times I came, the guy raised sound. I know he has prayed. There are people that sing without praying. It's not my... I'm not saying that they are not trying, but my spirit doesn't connect with an altarless song song without altar is deep that strikes deep <laughs> you can't help it it can bless others has it not happened to you there were songs you were enjoying those days you nearly got born again but when you got an aircraft you wondered why you were so you cannot stop people from being blessed at that level but i believe that there are men with heavy duty engine in the name of jesus you'll be blessed today not just in my session, in the session of all other people. And I want to um, celebrate Reverend Zubi that is in the house. Can we welcome you? Sorry that it has been done before. Now, now, I know <laughs> when I started, I don't used to do this so until I found out that you have to learn it and all that. So it's good. And then I was wondering who the dear woman of God is until you told us now that that's the wife of our dear Reverend. You are welcome, my God bless you. And then my friend and uh, do you go to DMGS? Ah, that's where you missed it. It would have been complete. <laughs> so I have people from DMGS and UNM. Amen. God bless you in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you this night. I ask you to take charge. I yield myself to you, Holy Spirit. I ask you to make my lips the pen of a ready writer, ascribe in the hearts of men to comfort, ascribe to instruct, ascribe to change, ascribe to transform, ascribe to deliver, ascribe to shift us from one level to another. We trust you completely and holy, Holy Spirit, that beyond our imagination, even this evening, that you will reveal yourself and reveal your glory to us. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The matter of the glory of God is one of the most complex things to teach in the scripture. The reason is because the glory is best experienced. The best definition cannot capture the very essence of God. Of all the things that God will use to capture his essence, he used the word glory. The Bible said in the book of Hebrews chapter 1, God who has sundry times and in diverse manners spoke, spoke to our fathers through the prophets has in this last day spoken to us through his son, media man. Will you show me verse 2? That's not where I'm going. He said, had in this last days spoken to us by his son whom he had appointed heir of all things by whom 
also he made the worlds. Verse 3. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. So whatever God is, is captured in the glory. And the scripture extending further this revelation that is captured in the book of Hebrews chapter 1, speaking through the ministry of John in the book of John chapter 1. The scripture said, we beheld his glory, the glory like that of the only begotten of the Father. Now, the first question that comes to your mind now is this. Why is it that anytime any member of Trinity wants to reveal the weight of themselves in such a way that you will not be able to be, you will not be able to miss anything about them, that there will be a clearer definition of their weight and essence. They define themselves in glory. Are you with me now? In fact, according to the scripture, when a believer realizes his full potential in Christ, then that man has entered into the fullness of glory, which is Christ in us. The Bible said that Christ in us, am I correct? Christ in you, what? Christ in you, what? So, the Holy Ghost comes in a mighty way, and we call the Holy Ghost sometimes the glory of God. Sometimes the Bible, according to John, typifies Jesus as the glory of God manifested in the flesh. The Father said that His glory is manifested in His Son, Jesus. The question now is, what is this thing called glory that all of the Godhead is obsessed with the glory? If you are with me so far, say Amen. That is why the greatest pursuit a man will find himself the greatest part of pursuit is the pursuit of the glory of God. The reason why I went this path is to show you that if this is true, then the definition of what is glory is a little bit hard. If I had time, one of the things I would have done is to show you what I don't mean by the definition of the glory of God. So that even if I don't come to a conclusive definition, which is not my target, my target is to paint a picture using the scripture and then you come to your own conclusion from the pictures I've painted. Because I've searched and we have had many definitions of glory. Not one yet has met the expectation. Do you know why? To explain glory fully means that you have fully explained God. <laughs> Nobody has got in there. With all the revelations of Paul, he tried. But at the tail end of his ministry, in the book of Philippians chapter 3, especially starting from verse 7, he said, I have counted all things as nothing, so that for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, of whom I have counted all things nothing, sorry, is the other way around. Now, my point is in verse 10. He said that I may know you and the power of your resurrection. If you are with me so far, say amen. This is the testimony of somebody that has come to a later end of his ministry. And I ask the question from the one that said that I'm still young. But Paul saying that he is no more young. He is not young by physical age and he is no more young in ministry. It is recorded that the man is above 30 something in ministry, not in life, already as of that time. And that is why several of his language, of course, if you know a few things about the scripture, several part of the epistles of Paul, the language he uses changes. It approximates. And it is because of two reasons. At what stage in his work and ministry he wrote those letters, and number two, the audience, the people he's writing the letters to. For example, we know the Corinthian church that they are known as a church that is not that spiritual. And the content of the letter that he sent to them revealed that. As a matter of fact, it seems as if First Corinthian, Second Corinthian is more spiritual than first. Seems as if by the time we are coming to Second Corinthian, some of the flaws that Paul noticed in First Corinthians and wrote the letter has been dealt with. Maybe not all, but a few of them. In fact, when he came to Second Corinthians, that man that he won and said, ah, 
you are sleeping with your father, he came to another point and said, I have noticed a change around him. Strange what is in this country. He said, because of this, you should accommodate him now. If you have me so far, say amen. The only reason why I'm going to this point is to show you that after 33 years of working with God, don't be looking at my eyes, that's enough. Somebody is still pursuing something. Saying I have not apprehended it. What is that? God wants to define himself and defined himself in glory. What is the glory? John looked for a better word to define what of all the apostles. Are you with me? If you are with me so far, say amen. I'm just trying to lay a foundation. I'm going somewhere and I'm not not got into that place i'm obsessed with the matter that we are discussing i am personally obsessed it has been my prayer for for more than 15 years personally simply not show me your name. because i know that sometimes maybe because of higher understanding there are some other prayers we say we should not pray it's not show me your glory that we already have the glory of god Your heart doesn't have words. What your heart is crying for doesn't have words. Even if you say, Show me your glory, and it's not correct, leave it to the Holy Ghost to pick what you actually mean. Answer me first, leave it. Answer me. Let the thing come. Then let her win and say, Ah, that time you were praying, you should have added S where you added R. Ah. But I have now collected something, I've made a download made the download <laughs> you know why if you ask me God calibrates himself in glory the manifested glory is not necessarily the glory but it's part of the glory the reason why God calibrates himself in glory is because that is the only thing irredeemable that you can relate with and that kind of glory that God speaks that represents his essence I think it doesn't contribute anything to what I'm doing here. It doesn't contribute anything. That's how they told my father those days when he was alive that his wedding ring is his charm. He stopped wearing it. And things are still happening. So, are you getting the point? There is nothing I'm wearing that is part of what we are talking about. I can remove this my shoe. Remove. I can't remove my clothes because of this sense. But if you want, I will remove it. Anything. 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 You if you don't have anything if you like those days those days I think I thought it was about the clothes I was wearing I wore clothes and said I'm coming for a miracle meeting nothing happened in the miracle meeting then another day came I didn't wear anything and I wasn't coming for a miracle meeting then something happened it is now obvious that is not by your planning just carry something if there are activities going on on your inside things will happen outside more without planning than by planning if you even notice man of god some of the greatest miracles you have seen you did not really plan for it they plan for it the ones you plan for you say today i'm going to raise three cripples god will just be healing headache you will tell him lord defend your name I've already announced to these people that he will be healing headache and healing headache and his system. One day I prepared and said, Lord, this. And then I noticed it's just us away. So what's my business with us? I said, I pray for you, bring your crutches. And that person said, When you pray for crutches, my us are left. <laughs> Now, I'm not 
saying that you can you, that's how it works when you pray what you pray for happens but i tell you that there are days that it is like that if you're with me so far say amen the reason one of the i hey, sorry i went in. a young man asked me why did he pray for a crippled person or did this nothing happen i said that's one of the proof that you're a genuine you are totally in control of everything that is happening. I will doubt your true ministry. I will doubt whether you are doing Sometimes God has the liberty, holds the authority to decide that this thing you want to happen today, I don't want it. And then you will do many things, nothing will happen. You will not be happy. They will be happy in heaven. The reason why they are happy is that at least they are proved one. You are genuine, two. You are human. Yes. That is actually a proof that a man is genuine. If somebody does some things at totally at his willpower and the way he wants it all the time, that means he's the one in charge. But I'm not in charge. Of him. And at least I know your man of God. He is not in charge. He's the Holy Ghost. When you remove that great personality from behind, everybody will be the same. And him, he is huge. He is mighty. He is good to behold. But me, I know myself. You don't know me. You don't know me, Pastor. Me, I know myself. If you remove Holy Ghost. You know that thing that is in the Bible? That he was mad beyond recognition. Nobody desired him. That is my testimony. Somebody saw me recently. said, I passed through your hands. And said, Phew. You don't know me. Heard this story before. They told me to accept. Is it not people that is dark like Daniel that we ask? <laughs> the way you are dark, the way you, it will fit you well. Are you getting the point now? But they looked at somebody that is fair like me and say, Oh, yeah, accept them. It is because of the way I was before. I was not looking anything like. And the same way, if God decks you with his glory from heaven even if you are not beautiful physically male or female people will like you so much the day you leave that person that make you likable you will find that you are still your old guy struggling that nobody wants to identify with holy ghost i submit to you ah small boy like me who am i if you don't help me i'm finished the reason why we say this thing sometimes is so that because we have noticed that a lot of people are learning from us so that they will find out that I'm not superhuman. No. Somebody came to my house and saw me. The man was doing it there. Is this is the apostle that we used to see online. When you roar, you are a lion apostle. I said, I'm not a lion. You can be. Are you not seeing me in my house? This is me, I finished. There is nothing I added anywhere. Look at my brother now, who met David that came with me. At least, if nobody knows, you know. Look at me, if, if I'm fake, come and take the mic and tell them. Announce to them. Because sometimes, I remember those, they will be checking and checking me. Only if only them, they will be checking things. Because, are you getting to know that is there anything I don't know? Say after me, Ebele. You know you get ah the Ebumon. Say after me, Ebele. Nebumon. Ndi bono kweba. Makai kwe yozo. Number one. Number two. Hmm. Kai kwe again. Number one. Number two. Number one, number two. Let's go a little further. Say after me, me baby, me one. Okay, let's do it three times. Number one, correct. Number two, number one, number two. Number one, number two, that man at the back, are you an evil man? No wonder, because your mouth is in like. <laughs> I 
I've been watching you. I needed to confirm. <laughs> Not that. If you are with me so far, say amen. <laughs> there is no option. No. We will fast, fast, fast. A young man asked me, say, Apostle, if I fast to one point, I will stop. I say, I have not stumbled on the revelation. The revelation of where to stop, I have not found it. The higher you grow, it doesn't make you to stop fasting or praying or studying. It makes it more effective. The impact of your prayer and fasting and study increases with your greater knowledge of God. It is not to reduce it. It is more advantageous that men of stature actually go deeper in prayer. Because their prayer will have more power and more effect. I can tell you. Five men of stature can pray and get more things done than 1,000 people that doesn't know this left and right. If you are with me so far, say amen. So, let's continue on the lecture on the glory of God. So, I began to set my heart on the things that I perceive that the scripture is going towards this general direction. Anybody that is anybody in the scripture was in pursuit of the glory. Do you know Moses? You have heard of Moses? Have you divided the race? Kelafi. Huh? Kelafi. Your mom is very Kelafi. Gozier. Have you divided the race? Have you fed 3 million people food in the wilderness? Have you brought water for millions of people to drink? have you done huh? have you have you commanded frog to fill everywhere you know in a club yeah? have you caused water to turn to blood huh? this is a little bit of the cv that moses carried after that man has done that great sign and wonder he just appeared one day it just occurred to him that he didn't really know whom he is following he found out that God actually calibrated himself in glory. And the glory that God calibrated himself in is not just the Shekinah that manifests. It is the weight. It is one called Doga. Doga. It is not just, it's not just about the fact that it is intrinsic. No, that's not the major thing about it. It is about the fact that it's after me weight. Did hear you? So after me, wait. Let's say it again, again, again. It's not all of us saying this thing. There are many here. Let's say it again, again, again. And I keep telling people that God in this kingdom doesn't count His people. He weighs them. Are you seeing it? So when God weighs us, that's how God does things. In fact, typifying in a physical sense what it means for somebody to be weighed, God brought out a means through the ministry of Moses. It is that thing is called the shekels of the sanctuary. You know, the scripture said through the ministry of Moses, God said that every firstborn is my own. How many of you remember? Any every firstborn is my own. But God also went ahead and said, You can redeem your firstborn. Like, even though the firstborn is my own, you can take the firstborn back. But the way to do it is that you will come before the altar and we will do conversion for you. Like, you can't do that conversion. You can't go to your house and decide eh, that eh, one million is the equivalent of my son. Is it not true? Ask God. Now, God said, told Moses, he said, it, just come one side, let me use you. Let me clear these remaining children of Israel. It means that according to the weight, the balances of heaven, Moses weighs higher than all the rest of the children of Israel. Are you seeing the point now? So if we come before the shekels of the sanctuary and convert the weight of glory that Moses have touched, it far outweighs all of the children of Israel combined together. If you are with me so far, say amen. You didn't say amen. Where, where, where are you? In only mafia. Where, where are you? Where, tell me where are you. Okay, we'll all cut that. 
Rafa. Sí, mi amor. Andeno ni huote. Marita chui. Pay attention to me. I labor to come here. Don't allow it to waste. You with me. Who is that young girl that is responding to me? God bless you in Jesus' name. No, is that young girl? No, sister, small sister. God bless you in Jesus' name. See, there are many people that respond to me. But there is a voice. I've heard it three times now. So Moses came to a point where he noticed that the things that happen cannot be compared with the things that he can become. There is a densifying of God within a man that the material with which he densifies that man is what is called glory. And God said that his essence can be calibrated in that glory so that in every measure to which a man enters into the glory is an entrance into God himself. There is no way God can reveal himself outside of that glory. There is no way God can define himself outside of that glory. There is no way God can host himself outside that glory. There is no way God can bring us into interaction outside of that glory. The summary of whom God is, is that glory. If you are with me so far, say Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. For 
if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more doth the ministration of righteousness exceed. Self me exceed. For even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect. In this context now, we cannot, it's not as if that thing is not glory and it is not glorious, but in this context, there is a context in which we cannot reckon that as glory. By the reason of that, by, by, by reason of the glory that what? That what? I didn't hear you. That what? No, I'm not through with. I'm not through with. By the reason of the glory that what? Actually, this is the scripture of my emphasis. I don't know why you are rushing to remove it. I want to discuss a little about the excellent glory. Just a little. There is something that is profound. You will notice, sir, that there are three apostles that had special encounter with the person of Jesus. Peter, James, and John. It so happened that James, through the hand of Herod, was killed. So we have two more witnesses remaining that can testify of that special kind of encounter. Something is striking. The strongest basis of their apostolic authority is hanging upon one, one thing. And if you study the scripture well, if you are with me so far, say amen. If you study the scripture well, in the ministry of John, in fact, when John was starting, especially, he did a few of the work in his gospel, but especially in his epistle. Show me First John chapter 1. I'm coming back to this. Show me First John chapter 1. Quickly, quickly. That which was from the beginning, which we have what? Heard. Which we have seen with our eyes. Which we have looked upon. And our hands have handled of the word of life. Now, now, now. I know we, according to, especially some of us that have root in, in the, the faith movement. This, this is word of life, word of faith, word of God. It is it. But it is also a physical thing. That our hands have handled is not a spiritual handling first. It is actually a physical handling. He's saying the word that finally became internalized in us and became the basis of our life in God that they touched that word physically. I'm trying to build credibility for the apostles John and Peter. That the basis of their apostolic authority was hinging upon an encounter that they had with Jesus on the mount. And such an excellent glory was revealed to them. And the imprint of that encounter was so strong in their life that from the time they began to the time they ended, they stood upon that encounter as the basis of their authority. All their teaching revert back to that. Now, this is what I mean. It means that even when they move forward, for them to move forward in their calling, in their advancement in God, they go back. Each time they advanced forward in their calling, they went back and had a fresh encounter with that glory they saw on the mount. That means for them, progress does not mean that they abandoned the things that was foundational to the apostolic authority. Progress is that for them to advance in a new layer, God brings afresh that same encounter. He reinvents himself. The reason is because the glory that they saw, they now understood in the light of the New Testament by the ministry of the Holy Ghost, they now found out that the glory they handled is a glory that excels. I'm still coming to that. It means that if we walked the glory, we walked it to produce something for us now. Tomorrow, 
what we are going to work to produce something new for us is not something new what we are going to do is to walk that glory again then it will excel if you are with me so far say amen so every time the apostles come to a new junction in their calling their ministry and their work with god what they do is they decide to go back to the rudiments that they learned when they were with jesus the things that they engaged and it was able to cause the glory to evolve they give themselves to that routine and after some times after a, a few period of time that sometimes might not be determined by them it can be determined by god they know that this thing works but they can't determine how it's going to work and how long it's going to take are you with me so they work it again knowing that that glory they encountered is able to push itself further oh my brother let me tell you the was on the flight to Zambia and God told me have you noticed in the Bible that there are seven excellencies that I have so I don't understand what don't understand seven excellencies now when you hear excellencies first first thing that occurs to you there are two major things but first thing that occurs to you is that whatever we say is excellent has a capacity to transcend it means that there are elements in it that captures eternity. Are you following me now? What we mean by transcend is any man that invested in what is excellent. You can live this life and find out that what we, the treasure is intact. That means that investment actually transcends time and space. So whether you are alive or dead, the component of your exploration has not left whatever has the ability to go beyond this life is transcendent that's one what it also means to excel means that if i can mount pressure on something it will keep increasing perpetually like infinitum that is what it means that it excels it means that if you if you found god here today a man of god that is if you work hard by the time you are coming tomorrow you find out that god has moved the holy ghost is a moving spirit god is constantly excelling into heavier weights of his glory the civilizations of heaven is advancing and the capacity of a man to stay in touch with the ability to execute on behalf of god is based on the fact that he's in touch with the level of the excelling glory so if glory has excelled to this level and God said that the economy of his dispensing in this end time is on this measure, on this calibration of glory, we are not discussing what can activate it here. That's not my job now. If God is here now, but we tossed him heavily here and shook our campus here, this is where we shook our campus. But he moved like this. He didn't make this invalid. It simply meant that the glory has what excelled the people that are in the economy means you know what is economy economy is how god has ordained to dispense his resources so that he can achieve his purposes so an economy we decide that ah, this year we are going to give one billion to education 10 billion to defense this one to the now that we mean that economy of heaven can decide that the largest quota of heavenly resources is tailored towards this based on the civilization that the glory that excelled has revealed to men that is in touch of with where god is god is emphasizing on this that's just how heaven works are you getting the point if you stay less than that it will seem as if you are laboring and not seeing anything what's the problem glory has moved God warned the children of Israel he said that pillar of fire don't stay when that pillar of fire moves don't stay if you stay you are wasting time the pillar of fire moved 
you are still where you are. The cloud shifted and you are still stagnant. God excels. He's moving all the time. He's moving. He's moving. He's moving. That is why even you will keep walking on the glory inside. So that God will not move and you are left with... Listen. What you had before is not bad. It's just that civilization has what? Excel. And God does not know any other way to calibrate himself except in glory. So that means the release of God to achieve his purposes in men has advanced to another layer. And men are stuck in what he used to be. Not because those things were bad. But simply because they didn't move with the moving spirit. If you are with me so far, say amen. I have a burden. I hope that in the next few minutes, I will be able to at least strike something in your heart. Then we we'll begin to pray. That's why we pray the way we pray. So that I will not be left behind. I will not be left behind. When, when God is activating new resources, new, you just notice that. It's not as if, did you start sinning? No. You are not feeling my pain. There are churches that they have invited me to and said, Apostle, we need revival. And I did research. Because sometimes I do research. I do research and check the churches. I found out that they did not do anything wrong. All they did was to stand when the Holy Ghost was moving. That's all they did. Nothing wrong. They didn't sin. They didn't fornicate. They didn't do anything wrong. Just that the Holy Ghost what moved. They stood. So the glory went and tabernacled somewhere else. You are now feeling my pain. Many of you are like that. There were days the Holy Ghost made your room his house. When you open the door, smoke come out. Not in the spirit, physically. I know I can speak of these things because my hands have handled it too. Years ago, if I'm doing Bible study in the room, suddenly, I'm not joking, my Bible will begin to talk. I'll be... Let me leave that part. The glory of God will fill the room. I'm not saying uh, I feel something. You will see the weight. This It will fill it like smoke. It will be thick. If you open the door, you fall on the ground. If you ever open that door, you will fall and not wake up. One time I was in the north and I studied the thing was descending, descending, descending. It, it, it doesn't come suddenly. It will just be saturated. After four hours, the place was filled. I said, Lord, allow me permission to get a witness. I went outside. I called a brother. I said, touch him. Say, come, come, come. Stand up now. He said, come. He said, where are you, dog? How old are you? Are you 100 years? Yes. Uh -uh. How old are you? Look at this man that I'm older than. Megalia, Megalia. Nini for name? Ya no na na kan choro nye ine Megalia. Sir, come here. We'll stay one place. Mili maya do frobe. Mili a day we wo one wo hu chapu me. One wo hu chapu yaya. One wo hu chapu. One wo chapu city is ne buten do fo. Listen to me, million dollar hand of web jams we enter inside. Oh, it's so the cleanest water is the one, can the one moving? Moving. Many of us are young here. Can you be now doing what I let it? You are too young. If they are speaking, charge yourself, be in the business. You don't know when something will drop. Anything can happen anytime. I didn't plan to do this. I do. That's not my plan. Visit, visit, visit. I didn't plan to do this. Something is, something is happening inside of me. Something I, I can't hold it. 
Son of David, I will not allow you to pass. Oh, I will hold you this night. If you never know, so many ya come out bitch. You come out bitch. You na sinu na ma ha from me ni pe. Aun na ma ha from you che bi men mu kem na.
Jesus. May I not stand when God has moved. May heaven not be calling my name and I will hear it. May there not be summons to take me to places higher than I and I didn't hear it. I see in the spirit a lot of young men that God is calling in this season. But are you hearing? Can you hear? He's a summon into the realms of the tutorship of the glory of God. The voice of God will thunder consistently from that glory. The scripture said that someone slept beside the ark. He heard a voice. Samuel, Samuel! Samuel, Samuel! It was a summer. As he slept beside the ark. As he slept beside the ark. As he stayed close to the glory. He heard a voice. Samuel! We are the Samuels. We are there. We are there. We are the summons that we hear the voice of God afresh. That we carry that voice to a generation that will speak because God has spoken to them. We are there. They will encounter the glory of God as of the moment. And from that glory, God will speak. In Jesus' name. Let's please listen. Be seated. The glory of God bridges the gap between time and eternity. When the glory of God actually appears, you will not know whether you are in time or whether you are in eternity. That's why Mary asked the question. He said, how can these things be? He said, <laughs> he said the power, the glory of the Most High will overshadow you. Then the things that are totally impossible will become possible. Time will be suspended. Your natural abilities will be suspended. The tendencies of your mortality can be suspended. Your weaknesses. You can even tell God that I'm a young lady or that I'm young. Or that I'm from the village. I am from the village too. But when the glory of God comes. The lifelong journey of the believer is the pursuit of the glory of God. And when a man handles anything in the glory, he has the ability to keep improving by himself. Like we encounter the glory and handled something inside of it. If he stayed the way it is, it is because we don't know how to put the, pray, the, the, the glory under pressure. It has the ability to excel. The things that die out of our hand, even if it came from God, was as a result of the fact we did not get it from the glory. That's why he died. If you get a spiritual... <laughs> you know you can stumble on gifts and abilities outside of the glory of God. Several things. You can stumble on money outside of it. You can stumble on a lot of things outside there. But if you stumbled on that spiritual thing in the glory, it, it will keep improving. The years doesn't make it weak. The years make it better. Anybody that has worked with God a while will find out that there were things about his life that died off as he continued to grow. But there were things that became better. The ones that became better are products of the glory. They have the ability to excel and keep getting better. Like wine. 
they age and become better with years. If you are with me so far, say amen. amen. Show me that book of First John. Okay, good. Our hands have handled of the word of life. Next verse. Will you be fast? Next verse. Next verse is verse 2. For the life was manifested and we have seen it. So he's not just talking about a spiritual dimension. We have seen it. And bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. This First John chapter 1 is not too different from the Gospel of John chapter 1 too. It's not too different. It's just the context that changed, changed because of the destination of the letters. If you go through the letters of John, for example, if you, <clears throat> if you go to the book of Second, Second John, you will notice that he sent, he addressed a particular person. Even though a lot of people were captured under that category. The third John also addressed a particular person. There is the one he called the elect lady. Are you getting the point now? But his words never change. He means that he cannot go, no matter what John is talking about, he will explain it from the plane of the encounter that he had that have the ability to subsist. The things about him that can change, he put them aside and stayed on course on those things that he knows that the more he man pressure on it, the more he begins to grow. And they have stayed long enough with the life and glory that they encounter, that they should know its powers, potentials, and possibilities. They have tested it a few times. Tested it amongst the Jews. Tested it before Satan. Tested it in many places. And found out that it still stayed true. Are you getting the point now? So he cannot make this statement. Tested it in secondary school. Sit down, sit down. Don't. Tested it in secondary school. It worked. Tested it in the university. Tested it in the market. Tested it in the workplace. It's now consistent. They now came later and told you <laughs> what our eyes have handled. Our eyes have seen it. Hmm. He said that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that you also my fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his son Jesus Christ. When Peter was also given accreditation he said, we saw his excellent glory on that mountain. Even though he later came and said that um, we have a more sure word of prophecy. But before he said the more sure word of prophecy, he spoke about the physical dimension. Listen. They are trying to represent to you that the weight they carry inside, they actually touched it first outside. And they are saying that that is the basis of their authority as apostles. They are telling you, tell me how many people that touched it. In fact, when they had that encounter on the mountain, Jesus told them, don't tell anybody. That means this matter that they were explaining to us, they sealed it until certain, certain times later in their ministry. When their ministry has progressed enough that they have seen that God has given them permission to begin to share those things and they brought it out. Even when they brought it out, it is with awe that they brought it out tabling it as a basis of their unique apostolic authority. Saying that ah, we are many, but we are three that we are called to that mountain. Peter said we saw the excellent glory on that, the excellent glory on that mountain. It was at that junction they knew instantly that the one that was eating with them was not normal. It was, he was not normal. There is something about him in him that can blow up any time. They saw that though Jesus walked with them, he's a kryptonite, he's a dynamite, he's an atomic element. He can, he can crack anytime and suddenly his humanity will be put aside. And then divinity, the weight of glory will switch on and do things that no man can do. And then later on he will come and eat fish with you. The reason why they have to report and give a witness to that account is to show that Jesus allowed that to happen that way to show that there is a possibility of participation from us. Because if he did it as God only, 
then there is no need telling us that story. It means that it is just to wow us. Wow, God is in heaven. Wow, God is great. Wow, wow. No. He said, we handled it. He held that. That glory shine after shining. He held it like this. I'm not telling you a story. I'm saying something I've touched. I'm not telling you a story. He said, yes, there is a more sure word of prophecies in the Bible. But I tell you too. It's more like saying, scriptures told you, I tell you too. And I'm not contradicting the scripture and the scripture is not contradicting me. Scripture spoke about Jesus and revealed about Jesus. I tell you about him too. Spoke about glory. I saw it. So for them, they don't tell the story of the glory as letter. They don't tell the story of the glory as somebody penning down history or keeping an account for you to read and say, God, in the days of Charles Finney, when he enters a place, uh, people will do this. I tell the story sometimes, or sometimes I ask myself the question. Did you to go there, John? Who gave my cordial down court, Charles Finney? Who gave my cordial down court? We tell this story. I will not die until my eyes see the glory. Show me! after me I will not stop here there is a call for us to come yonder the glory of God has moved don't worry man please see it has moved let's join the glory 
o move on i need this way now to you i move quite fast sometimes you move a film you need to enter you need to enter a transport to catch up sometimes you need to enter a transport to catch up mm. can you not feel it the holy ghost he has moved we need to catch up we need to we need to, we need to catch up mm. carry me holy ghost carry me Pastor, Holy Ghost has moved. <laughs> It's still the same syllable. Lama 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 since three years. Sister Holy Ghost have moved. Oh. The, that glory has excelled. You are the one that decided to stay behind. I will not stay behind. I will not stay behind. I will not. I have fa- Oh my God. Push me, Holy Ghost. Push me. Push me into that river. I need you to carry me. Cut me now. 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 Cut me. 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 Masa bulema. Wow. Wow. Is the Holy Ghost moving and you are still behind? No, 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 no. I push myself. No, 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 no. Bayanuba, 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 Bayanuba Kobu, Bayanuba Kobu, Bayanuba Kobu, Bayanuba, Candana Payan, Candana Payan, Candana Payan, Uwana, Uwapo, 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 Payan, 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 Holy Ghost! Nandana Payanuba, Hanabaya, 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 Enter, 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 Enter. Your neighbor, enter into this. Throw yourself, throw yourself. Enter, 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 Banyan uba, uba na apu. Uba apu, uba apu, uba apu, ne konap, ne konap, ne konap, ibanyan. That sister is entry, ona apu ne, ona apu ne, that sister is entry. Uba check up apu ne, check up apu ne, check up apu ne, check up apu ne. Enter, 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 
If you cannot, don't change your posture. Your posture is more important than sitting down. God told Moses, and this is the glory that fades. He said, watch out for the cloud when he moves. Can you see the cloud? Let it not be that God has moved and we are in the same place. If we stay, we will not see results. We will not see the things we expect. It is not God that is limiting it. Just that he just, he just moved. Carry me, Listen, I saw some people in the spirit. You had something with God. But well, God is trying by all means to see if you can yield to him so that he can improve on that thing you have. 
But you are too stuck in your ways that you are not yielding to the Holy Ghost. That thing is not bad, but that glory has excelled. It's like, it's like somebody using... What kind of phone do you use, sir? Android. What kind of Android? Eh? Vivo. Do you know that there is Android... What now are we in? Android 12. There used to be Android 5. 6. There are some apps that are not compatible with Android 6 anymore. What's the problem? The software needs to be updated. The phone is not bad, but we need to shift. We need to go up. Sometimes, if you are using your phone, you will notice. I don't know about you, but for me, after some time, they will tell me that update your software, update your phone. Or, or not, they tell you, am I correct? If you leave your phone updated, it is susceptible to, to malware, to virus, to attacks. It's updates. So after me, updates. Lift up your hands wherever you are. If I say one, you shout it with all your strength. Holy Ghost, update me now. Just wait for me to count. We are going to do it three times. You are going to shout it because you mean it and something will happen. Are you getting the point? Number one! Say now, say now, now, now. Not later, not later, now. Number one! Something else. That is an excelling dimension. You need to get to that place. You need to get to there. You need to get there. You need to get there. Number two! Your weapons has become old. It has become blunt. Your skills have become outdated. Your software needs to be updated. Number three. Lift up your voice and pray for the next one minute. Cry out, cry out, cry out. Update me. We 
Just tell the Lord, let this cry remain. Let this cry remain. Let this cry remain. Let this hunger never die. Let this cry remain. for your glory. Keep me calling for your glory. Keep me hungry for your glory. Calling the nation 